it's Thursday, um, January 19th, 2023. Um, I was watching um, a piece of Dragnet. I don't really know how to process it today. I'm not really going to talk on it. I get it as a learning tool that it's gone on and it's happened. I've heard of it before. Um, but again, somewhere between a square, a diamond, a triangle, a circle and a dot. Um, I just used it as just file that away for I get it exists. I just don't have at the moment any itemized lines of mention. However, there was a commercial inside of this episode. Um, and it's um, a, a pairing together. I want to believe it's the ancestors coming together in some form of either a chain of command or a ladder of sorts. Um, the father that actually was saddened by my getting hurt, not the one who rejoices in hurting other people's children. Um, and the one that wants to see me and the baby succeed, regardless of the circumstances that have gone on to rectify the situation in the field especially considering that, again, I can, I know that there's two assets in North America. I don't know about the rest. I don't know how many, I don't know what they call the others. I really, I don't, but it's important what happens to the baby and I, who's now full grown. Um, and then I have constellation concerns. Um, not with the children themselves necessarily, but with being raised by strangers. I think the humans speak of being raised by wolves. Not quite sure how to balance that out. So they have this three piece old Hollywood, um, and like a, a time travel through Hollywood and the evolution thereof. Um, I saw they're bringing back something called a night Court. So it's almost like if I had to look for pieces of what were the previous generational night court acknowledgements by the father that loves me regardless and only wants to see me and the baby succeed since we are under his charge and we are his two known assets in the field. And there's a lot of hooey that's been going on covering for all sorts of wrong reasons. Um, so I'm looking and it says Perry Mason, Matlock, which is Ben, and then in the heat of the night. So knowing that they brought back night court, which is normally where it's handled, um, in tracking perhaps uh, the assets and some of the experiences that have gone on um, that have not been addressed properly, but making some formal documentation in tracking like a storm of a different kind in some codex for Universal City or for Universe. Um, and on behalf of the assets who themselves, I mean, like in my situation, I don't know about the other assets, but in my situation, um, it's gone completely wrong and I don't know how to get and signal to the dad that cares about me. Um, since I don't know who's working what. Um, and so there's, um, this commercial that goes on and then I looked at the title, um, for this, uh, so then I looked at the first series of Perry Mason and Matlock that I got up early enough and I caught the two first episodes. 
and it goes from, I'll read the titles, but um, it shows like a whatever. And then the Matlock episode, which I, again, I wasn't, I can't watch the full episode because it's so like, how could they have known in the eighties and not stopped the, what was that a reality that could have happened to me um, in this Ben Matlock, they had, um, they talk about this trip to St. Thomas. I have to imagine it's the investigator that cared about me, um, following a trail of Peter sent me to St. Thomas on this honeymoon with the 1976 after I was already hurt but the island of St. Thomas I don't find the humor in any of this when I research St. Thomas it says that he finds India and he's part of the architecture in the 12 apostles um but the only Thomas in Brady Bunch he was already at his pinnacle peak in the NFL and he had uh NFC conference so I don't understand how this Jason thing ever came into play and why I wasn't as the asset going to have the only other North American asset that was known in the same cosmological house that their most beloved Brady was in I don't know why special treatment wasn't given and why I wasn't handled in a much more um, loving, caring manner and why it was just like a New York City ball drop and then these issues, but yet I'm still the asset and I still have the future asset. TV has your alibi every weekday. Your Honor, I don't know what kind of a stunt this is. Would you be good enough to explain to the court just what it is your secretary is working on over there? So it goes from black and white, and it goes timetable from me, TV. Um, and it says Perry Mason to Matlock to In the Heat of the Night. Let me explain, Perry. Exhibit A, Perry Mason at 9, 8 central. Exhibit B, Matlock at 10, 9 central. Exhibit C, in the heat of the night at 11, 10 central. Watch these programs every weekday. To give you an alibi, you mean. Today, starting at 9, 8 central on BTV. I don't know who's in charge of MeTV for New York and New Jersey. I don't know who does scheduling, but whoever did... They paired Perry Mason, and again, that for me, is that Masonic? Are those the knights that actually want to see this handled correctly for once without having to come forward in whatever they do? Um, it's S6E1, and if I put Perry and I spell it P-E-R-I, like peritrichus, it's mul multiple flagellate in like string theory. Um, and then Matlock, so uh, Perry Mason S6E1 is the case of the bogus books. It says a thriving racket in first editions come to light after a bookstore proprietor is found slain. I'm not quite sure if that has reference to the Book of Kings. I don't know where to find reference in the Book of Kings. I don't even know what outlet or source holds onto that information. I haven't been given that level of knowledge. And then it goes to Matlock, which is S8E22. Again, the numbers themselves are indicative of 
whatever's going on. It's called The Idol, a young lawyer, Scott Stevens, who apes Ben's style, is involved in blackmail and murder. Is that having Ben not come here spiritually to the father that he belongs to spiritually? So this way he looks more like the ape Romer. Just curious. Um, and I only say that because um, in this episode, Ben has wallpaper paste in his hair while they're investigating this murder. And there's this very specific trip to St. Thomas. And there's the gate that they reference with GA. Um, and there was very really in Bayside after I was hurt several ways, a trip to the wallpaper store, um, which I forget the name of the wallpaper store in town, uh, that was here for years. Now it's out of business. Um, it was family owned by one of the local families. Uh, and I bought striped wallpaper um, for the kitchen and a different floral pattern for the dining room for which Peter came over and he wallpapered both the kitchen and the dining room. Somebody broke into my house and did something to a figurine that Joanne had bought me down in St. Thomas. And when I came over to see Richard Pep, I saw that he had a figurine too. He paid money for that? Yeah, are these one of the, the conference people that actually care about the women and the girls and don't like to see, especially the pretty ones, get hurt by whatever? I mean, again, I have a very different situation. I'm not just the average I mean, I get that there's some investigatory process, but I'm an asset of time where time is money and spatial relation and the constellation and the children I bear, the fruit I bear off of my family genetic tree and the husbandry offered and able to bring to fruition is incredibly crucial and important. And I don't know... There, there is no reason why a Romer should have ever, or a T. Frio, should have ever been even allowed near me, let alone to touch me, let alone have children with. I got it for half price. This is what's really interesting. He was planning on going back down to St. Thomas. His plane tickets were ordered by phone and were delivered to his house just hours before he was murdered. This time he was planning on staying at the Hotel San Suji. He stayed at the Breakers last time. Well, I don't get it. Breakers. What some blood ugly figurine and some airplane tickets got to do with his murder? Thanks for the confirmation. He was a butt ugly figurine. And then there were plane tickets that were issued that were purchased by a father that I don't recognize at all, but yet still exists somewhere in the system. I don't know, but I do know that he, a private investigator, was going to the Caribbean and he dies. And Yolanda, his partner, was in the Caribbean and she dies. Something's going on down there. Wallpaper paste. Is that how you all signal each other? You know, like little pieces of things to keep an eye on or like an ear out for and like calling other people's birds in the gated section of a very special class of Air Force? Just curious. Especially when you know what an asset a woman can be and just how important it is for your house and for the future of the nation and the house. Hey, 
And here it says Pan Atlantic. I don't remember what flight we were booked on. I don't even remember. It was like one of those, like, place I had never even heard of before he brought it up. Didn't plan the trip. It was a gift of sorts. Yes. Judy Pole from Talk the Town Tours. Very nice to meet you. We almost left without you. Enjoy my life. Judy from Talk of the Town Tours. Mm, that's interesting. Don't know if that's like a Bunko reference or I don't know my what they call it. That would have been my side. Um, here we are at 10.40 a.m. it said on time for a piece of history that should have never happened and never transpired this way, but yet had to be documented in a special out of reach place unless it's needed or needs to be called in as an exhibit, I suppose. St. Thomas Reason. Yes, I heard about that. Who told you, Judy and Brian? Matter of fact, they did. Yeah. Yeah. You talked to them a lot? Oh, they, they bring me an awful lot of business, Mr. Madlock, so you can bet that I talk to them as often and as nicely as I can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I read their brochure on that uh, St. Thomas uh, tour they have. You know, what I don't understand is how you can make any money when, when you give all their clients such big discounts on their rooms. Well, they more than make up for it with the money I make on the food, the drink, the parasailing rental, the equipment rental, that sort of thing. I mean, believe me, all I need to make a profit down there is volume. <laughs> Again, I see these pieces, I see these symbolic references at like a space and time crime level. Um, what I don't see is where any of this has been rectified or made better. It just has gotten so much worse. Um... It's star one nine seven eight star eight three seven eight Nicole Caterosa today. There they have on um, something about the um, there's something going on with this George Santos, and then there was something else going on with the U.S. debt ceiling. Not quite sure what that's all about. Um. I haven't really been watching GMA3, but I will today. Um, it's ABC. 
And it shows um, this confusing spin with the Santos thing from like what the front face is saying. It's really confusing. In with new trouble for new congressman and serial liar George Santos, a disabled U.S. Navy veteran now alleging Santos stole $3,000 raised on a GoFundMe page to save the vet's sick service dog, Sapphire. Santos allegedly using a different name to run a pet charity that apparently never existed. The dog died. Santos denies the allegations. Veterans in Long Island are gathering to protest Santos today. Funko items or are these charitable donations by concerned vets of past atrocities that happened while the rest of the sleeping giants were busy at work destroying other realities? I mean, I'm just curious. Um... It looks like the leisure, travel, and sports conferences just blew up and exploded overnight in this. Credit markets went to, I don't know what, money got siphoned off the top and big development projects started going on. Air travel, busing children in from places that nobody wanted to ever meet. Like, where's the safe haven where you're like, you close your door at night. You're like, no, I don't have to worry about a bus full of whatever showing up in the morning in my city. Those days long gone. Well, I don't really think the military did a very good job protecting us at home. Just saying. Well, in a separate incident, Santos has said his mother was a survivor. It's hard to track those U.S. dollars that were prior expenditures that threw the U.S. into this theoretical debt that then they want to collect on something when I really don't see what was all the service they already paid for. Things got worse, not better inside the United States of America, in like the Continental 50. What happened to the place while they were going in all this debt that they keep claiming? And who are they paying? And for what? of the 9-11 attacks on the Twin Towers and died of a related cancer. But immigration documents indicate Santos's mother was not even in the country during the 9-11 attacks. And the new developments in New Mexico and the deadly shooting on the Rust movie set. So it's star one nine seven eight star eight three seven eight Nicole Cataruza. It's Earth Solar System Milky Way Universe Galaxy is broken, and it's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York one one three six one. Um, and then they had this like really weird thing at, at the see the BS this morning or CBS. Um, they have on this woman who wrote a book she's filipino um but she's in america she was brought back to the philippines something about freedom of the press i'm not real sure what that's about not really sure how that works um more things they don't they haven't like enlightened us how they run the law um in running up debt and not really I mean, like, again, what are the assets supposed to do exactly? Here's what they're saying. Um, this woman, apparently, something was being argued in the Philippines. Um, and then she was speaking to somebody at Facebook. And she's like, 97% of the Philippines is on Facebook. And what are they trying to data mine for from the unsuspecting? Is there like a wall where they can only see Filipino people to protect the Americans or unsuspecting Americans from Islanders elsewhere? Just curious because I have all sorts of friend requests. There's been no security acknowledgement or information told to me of be careful who to befriend, like how Facebook works. Like just, just 
it's available and there was no who could see your information, who might be tracking you, all that stuff. Nobody has even alerted as far as consumer protection agency of the continental assets in the United States of America. The one that has the cantilever protection, not the outlying out-of-towners where it then becomes this gray area of like, no, there's really very clear way to, to know how to set up boundaries. Our show, journalist and Nobel Peace Prize recipient Maria Ressa, who bravely exposed the brutality of former Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte. Yesterday, Ressa and her online news company Rappler were cleared of tax evasion charges brought against them by the former regime. The acquittal is seen as a victory for freedom of the press. Ressa had this emotional response to the ruling. Listen. This acquittal, I hear that you want to is not just for Rappler. It is for every Filipino who has ever been unjustly accused. Mm. It's really huge like it's for her. Yes. Huge. It's it's been hanging wonderful. over her head for so long. She's still facing a number of other yes. charges, uh, but she is one of my personal heroes. I love seeing her here. I used to work with her at CNN. Um, and in her book, there was a remarkable moment because the Philippines are a test case of when social media can really affect political outcomes yes. and the way people yeah. think about things. She said that she met Mark Zuckerberg, this is in her book, and she said, you know, 97% of Filipinos are on social media, are on Facebook, and they're getting this mis misinformation. And Zuckerberg allegedly said to her, well, what about the other 3%? Yeah. And she sort of thought that was kind of funny at the time, but she doesn't find it funny now, and right. she really wants these companies yeah. to do a better job. And she's holding them to account, too. She really is. Yeah. Really a hero. Uh, all right, another hero for a lot of people now, a historic moment in Maryland. It's star one nine seven eight star eight three seven eight. I that mean again, like test case, yeah. But when it affects real people in the field, it. I mean, 